What's up, guys? My name is Ron from Comics and Stuff, and for today's episode, we are going over the new Ryu action figure from Jada Toys that I have been anxiously, patiently waiting for. I mean, I'm a big Street Fighter fan, and I'm sure many of you got fond memories dealing with Street Fighter, so when they announce a $25 line, I'm all for that. <laughs> I'm all for that a lot. I mean, that's right around my wheelhouse, and to tell you the truth, right off the bat, they're impressing me with this packaging. I mean, it's done in an arcade cabinet kind of a style. You do got buttons, you do got a joystick. And at the top, that's a nice little touch with that life bar. At the bottom, there is a character select screen picture of Ryu, Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challengers in the middle. Ryu, warning, at the bottom, legalities barcode to the top, not much of anything. And to the sides, we got artwork of Street Fighter characters. To the other side, more nice artwork of Street Fighter characters. And to the back, we got the first wave of figures. Fei Long, Ryu, and Chun-Li. Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challengers up there. But when you go to the bottom, that character select screen right there, I hope we go deep into it. But before we even discuss any of those possibilities, let's open this package up and check out the figure. And here is Ryu outside of the package. And at first glance, he's awesome. He looks great. I mean, right? <laughs> I mean, right? But there is something. And maybe if you're eagle-eyed enough, you could catch it. That really, really upsets me. But before we get into that, let's just do his measurements real quick. He stands just at a tad over six inches. And he comes with a bunch of cool accessories like this pair of Hadouken hands. That's nicely sculpted. They got some fingernails. The paint is applied where the paint needs to be applied, which is on the gloves. And those gloves are nicely textured. So these are necessary if you're going to throw some pics to have him throwing Hadoukens, which I'm guessing you would want to. Now, you're going to need this head sculpt because, come on, he's not going to throw Hadouken all serious. A grimacing head was a must. And I do say that it's nicely done. Like the hair itself is kind of soft. It got a nice wash. I don't know if the camera could catch it, but yeah, it's there, guys. Trust me. It's like a brown wash and stuff. I mean, the bandana is flexible, but I don't like that there's a little bit of black right there. And there's also a little bit of red on top of the head itself. The eyebrows, though, look how they're made to be looking, you know? His teeth are painted right. And yeah, I'm not upset with it. I'm not upset with it at all. I do want to talk about this Hadouken. Look at it. That's freaking nice to be included. It's done in a translucent blue. And when the light hits it, it looks rather nice, guys. There is also a pair of sculpted hands, I'm thinking. I don't know if it's actual sculpt or if it's like a sticker or something. I'm not too sure, like a 3D sticker, but it looks good. And taking a picture from the front will make it look even more awesome. Now, it does peg into this stand right here. So this stand is also something that I think is rather cool because check this out. Right? You could throw a regular Hadouken or if you're feeling fancy, you could throw a crouching Hadouken. So I like that. But now let's talk about the action figure Ryu himself. I gotta say, there's texture all around this. Texture on the pants, texture on this top part. It is super flexible, so it won't be getting in the way when you do kicks and all that. The belt is also made of like the same material. I'm guessing the you know bandana part is as well. Now there's veins, there's striations to those muscles. You guys already saw that there was texture on the gloves and there's shading as well, guys. If you guys look close right there, there is shading. I mean, if you break it up, yeah, it looks a little bad, but yeah, it looks rather good. And I got to say that although this and the pants itself, like this is a harder plastic, like way harder. It's different plastics. The shading makes it go good. You know, it, it makes it be cohesive. So that looks awesome. That looks a lot awesome. 
right here there is japanese lettering wrinkles on the top part and the rip parts look like how they're supposed to be so if you guys are wondering this is removable now which brings me to one of my little gripes this is the little gripe guys basically this like everything is all pegged in and everything this is the tiniest gripe guys because obviously you could paint it and all that but why make it flesh colored why not make it be white and have it a little more camouflage into that top in case you want to make ryu do some backstreet boys poses you know that being flesh colored stands out a bit <laughs> and you're thinking man that's not a big problem i know it isn't we're gonna get to the head sculpt guys because that's where my biggest problem let's take this off first because we're gonna do articulation soon after we talk about this head sculpt because i'm gonna get a little bit into this neutral head don't get me wrong guys it looks pretty good and i think they were aiming for that box look like if you guys could see the lips are a little frowned it looks almost identical so i do like the head sculpt uh, you know in general but take a closer look <laughs> let me see if you guys can fo focus right there if you guys see the face the i mean the eyes let's see right there the eyes itself does miss the mark a little bit and it makes it look like he's having white eye shadow so i don't like that at all and i know you can't see it from far like you can't tell that it's there like that's that kind of problem especially if you like kind of like bend his head a little bit but but i know it's there so that's a problem <laughs> also on the hair itself there's like splotches of white paint and stuff. That's something that I think I could fix itself. But the eye situation, I'm not going to be able to fix that at all. I mean, it's a bummer, but what can you do, you know? Um, I'm hoping none of you get that same issue, but unfortunately, I did. Anyway, let's get into the articulation. Now, he does come in a double ball peg up there, so that is rather awesome because that gives him a bunch of tilt also with the bottom ball i mean that gives him crazy tilt so that's not bad at all back he allows you to look back that much forward pretty dang forward and of course you're gonna get your rotation but check out that tilt. <laughs> all right now shoulders he does do a basic t pose so that's not bad at all full 360 he got butterfly joints that get you forward that much to try to make your Hadouken work. So it's not bad at all, guys. Don't get me wrong. It goes back this much for him to be flexing on Fei Long and stuff. And he does got a bicep cut, double jointed pinless elbows that get you about that far. There is a swivel and a hinge on the hands. But I also wanted to mention this, guys. When you use the hinge a bit, like, you know, it tends to pop off the wrist a little bit. Like, it's still connected, but it just gives a weird gap that I don't really like. <laughs> Maybe later on or something, they'll engineer that to be better. But I want to talk about this torso. Now, there is a diaphragm right here cut that gets you tad tilt. Back, a tad back. Not much at all. And let's put that there back down forward and just a tad forward but this bottom joint this bottom joint now super tilt and keep in mind guys that those gaps will be hidden once the top is on so that's good tilt back good back forward good forward in conjunction both of them you're gonna get practically whatever poses you be wanting so I do like that. And of course, guys, you're going to get your rotation on both ends. But the top part does fight the sides a little. So keep your keep aware of that. Now, his legs do a split like that pretty much all the way. And I will say that the crotch piece right here is of a flexible material. So it does got some give. I mean, kicking forward. Yeah, 
and you could give it a little extra kicking back just a tad but again you guys could give it a little extra to almost make him do a split <laughs> i mean a side split we already saw that he does do a regular front split right there so that's cool there is a thigh cut that works just fine double jointed pinless knees that work good as well and he does got like what is basically a boot cut except it's on the a shin cut let's call it a shin cut guys <laughs> that connects between his pants and his foot right there so you do get a little swivel right there ankles go forward that much back that much which isn't bad at all and you do got pivot so that is good that is very good guys i think this figure is awesome my only complaint you know is basically yeah come on that whole pain situation that whole debacle on his face and on the good face too because i kind of like it better than the grimacing face so anyway now that we did go through the figure and all of that let's do some comparisons with some marvel versus capcom characters now before heading into the comparisons guys i wanted to show you a quick look on this awesome backdrop that was included in the already awesome packaging it is a ryu stage and i failed to show it during the details section so i'm showing it off right now <laughs> it's done in the 16-bit sega genesis super nintendo kind of style you do see the video game sprites no high definition here i think that's a cool and awesome addition especially if you just want a quick display to show off your Ryu. But anyway, now that that's done, here I got him sized up with Fei Long. I don't have a Chun-Li yet, but when compared to just Fei Long, I think they scale rather nicely. For this comparison, guys, I'm just going to show him next to some X-Men characters in case you guys got an X-Men vs. Street Fighter display in mind. I got Wolverine right here on the left and animated series Cyclops on the right. And although they both from different companies and everything like that, when put together like this, I think it still works. And for this comparison, I just wanted to do some Marvel vs. Capcom 2 characters. I got MCU Hulk right here, the Builder figure. And I know it's not the preferred Hulk because, yeah, it doesn't look cartoony enough. But I do got the 20 years Captain America that I do think looks and scales rather nicely with Ryu. This comparison, guys, no lie, it's just making me want... The Iron Man with that proton can. You know the Iron Man I'm talking about. Basically, the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 Iron Man. It really makes me want that a lot. So, I think I'm going to have to buy it. Now, this comparison is for you guys who prefer a Marvel vs. Capcom 3 display. We do got two characters here that appeared in that game. With the Dark Phoenix right here on the left. And Deadpool from the Deadpool and Nega Sonic Teenage Warhead 2 pack. Now, again, when compared to Ryu, I still think this looks good, guys. Ryu could be fudged with X-Men, could be fudged with Marvel. Let your imaginations run wild with this figure and put him in whatever display you want. I think it looks great either way. So in conclusion, I absolutely love everything about this figure. I needed a Street Fighter line that was within my budget and thankfully this line seems to be filling up that role rather nicely. The articulation is good, the sculpt is good, the attention to detail, I mean the shading, the texture, everything I pretty much love about this figure. My only gripe would be the pain issues with my head sculpt, but that's more of a QC issue guys, you might not have that same problem. If you guys are interested in the figure, I will leave a link down in the descriptions. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like, comment, and consider subscribing because all of that stuff helps out the channel. My name is Ron from Comics and Stuff, and I'll check you guys on the next episode. Peace.